Oh, <laughs> here's how I spent part of my day. Oh, Mrs. Douglas has got moved. She crossed me up hard, dog. Broke my ankles. You know I got her back, though, right? I dunked on her. You know, there's nothing that feels better than a math teacher dunking on an English teacher. But I have to admit, she did get the assist on that dunk. There it is. <laughs> Strong. All right, hey, guys. Uh, that is so weird. See it? What are you doing up there? It's like an oversized fish in an undersized aquarium. Look at that. It's like... <laughs> All right, let's get started. Um, before we jump into lesson two to review our seventh grade year and a lot of sixth grade information, I came up with a new dad joke last night. You guys, I know have missed those, right? Um, I certainly miss hearing you guys go, oh, Mr. Douglas, stop. Um, this one, I am sure, has probably been figured out and said in the history of the planet before. But I've never heard it. I thought of it on my own. I made it up based on the topic we're doing today. Okay, ready? Here's the question. Where does a whole number go to get spare parts? Hmm. Hmm. Let's find out, shall we? Spare number goes to get... No, whole number goes to get spare parts. I don't get it, Mr. Douglas. To the decimal. Oh, got you. <laughs> All right, there you go. But that is our topic for today, decimals. We're going to be doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Fairly simple, a review from the beginning of the year. All right, let's take a look and do a couple examples. And where is my writer? There he is, right there he is. Okay, let's go with on green. Let's go with some yellow. Why is it way over here? Okay, teacher, are you ready to teach? Okay, here we go. So addition, you could have like, oh, I made up a couple, 0.05, 2, 0 0.05, 2, and 0.9. Four, eight. The thing about adding decimals is you just want to line the decimals up. Adding and subtracting, you line them up. Then you just add like you normally do, okay? But you draw, you add, line them up and drop them down. Drop the decimal down there, okay? That's going to be in the same place, only for addition and subtraction, okay? All right, 2 plus 8, 10. The writing on here is really weird with this. 5 plus 1 is 6 plus 4 is 10. Oh, I see what you did there, Mr. Douglas. 9 plus 1 is 10. Okay, so really, my answer is just 1 on that. Okay? <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> let's do another simple one over here. Let's do uh, point 0.1 plus point, and that was a plus over here as well. 0.731. Again, you just line them up, drop the decimal down, and but what do you do? There's nothing over here. You just put zeros there because there's nothing there, and nothing is zero. One plus zero, one, three. So those are just going to stay the same because there's nothing there, and then the seven plus one is eight. Okay, simple enough. Adding decimals you did in fifth grade is just a little bit of a review. All right, let's go on to the next one. Let's do subtraction. Let me, let me, okay, let's see what we're doing here. Okay, let's go with red. <clears throat> so for subtraction, you could have, um, I did one that was 0.7. What? Release, what the? Happened there. I love this um, application I'm using, but I hate its writing tools. I've already played with a whole bunch of free apps trying to figure out exactly what I was going to use <clears throat> on all my lessons. All right, point 
seven, zero, zero, and let's subtract point three, zero, seven. Okay. So you line them up, drop it down. There's the decimal. Okay. We line them up and drop it down. Okay. Just subtract like normal. Okay. You can't subtract seven from zero, so we're gonna have to borrow. So this crosses out and becomes a six because it's going to loan one there. <clears throat> but I need to borrow from that. So that's going to be a niner. And I have 10 minus 7 is 3. I have 9 minus 0 is 9. And I have 6 minus 3 is 3. 0.393 or 393 what class? Thousand. Okay, the TH is get me every time. Okay, so that's pretty simple. All you're doing for addition and subtraction is line them up and <clears throat> drop the decimal down. Um, for multiplication, it's really simple. It's the same thing. Go back to a nice, uh, maybe that color would be a little different. Okay, um, it's the same thing. We're just going to multiply. You just have to keep track of the number of your decimals. And I lost, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to start off with 0.37 times 0.21, okay? Now, this time it lined up because of the, they're both two-digit decimal numbers, but I will do the next problem where they don't line up. For multiplication, they do not have to line up, okay? 1 times 7, <clears throat> 1 times 3, Okay, and then we'll have a zero for the next line. Two times seven is four. This one's pretty cool. Two times, oh, whoops, 14. So I gotta carry the one. Two times three is six, seven. So when you add them up right there, <clears throat> how, see, I'm not pressing down. What are you doing to me? Let's just erase that part. Eraser skills, check it out. Okay, so then release button. Cool, my answer is 7.77, or oops, 777. 777, okay. <clears throat> well, actually, you're supposed, so some people would say, oh, there's two decimal places and do that, but no. But no. Um, you have to count the total number of decimal places. I don't know if I need to click that again or not. So if you come up here, it's one, two, three, four. There's four decimal places. So on this one, you have to go four spots. So it's actually 0 .0777 or 777 ten thousandths. This has been all over my screen. Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> next, um, I want to do one I said where they don't line up. So let's do 1.072 times 0.7. So see, they don't line up at all. <clears throat> There's one other trick one I'm going to show you in a second, too. Okay. So they don't line up. Now you just do it. 7 times 2 is 14. You guys can do it faster than I can write on this thing. 7 times 7 49. 50. K to the 5. 7 times 0 is 0. Drop the 5 down. And 7 times 1 is 7. Now how many decimal places do I have? Let me I'd switch colors, but I don't want to waste the time. 1, 2, 3 and four again four decimal places so in this particular one be one two three four decimal okay i'm going to do one more that's kind of a trick but see all you're doing is you multiply like normal there's nothing different there except for counting the decimal places that's it but here's one that's a little bit tricky or you know what oh yeah okay i'm still gonna have to make a little bit of room here go back over here let's switch to red for tricky danger watch out here's one point three times 
point one. So what a, a lot of times answer A or B on a question like this would end up being point three. Well, Mr. Douglas, one times anything equals itself, right? Yeah, one times anything, but that's not one. That's point point one. Ah, it's hard to line up the camera. That's point one. Okay, oh, we get it, Mr. Douglas. So it's still one times three is three, but you have one, two decimal places. So your answer is going to be point zero three or three hundred and that's all that means is it's three over a hundred that's how you say it if you get confused about your places <clears throat> all right so that was it for that um i wanted to show you and i'm gonna have to go over here to orange there's my orange and we will do what's a dark color will show up i think blue will show up pretty good on orange division division Okay, division with decimals is the one that's the most different. You know, adding, subtracting, line them up, drop decimal down. Multiplication, exactly the same. Exactly, you just count the decimal places. So division, if I had uh, point, um, 51 divided by point zero. Three, okay. Boy, that looks funny or weird. And you know, if it was a fraction, that this number goes right there. This number goes on the bottom. Okay, so that's a fraction. It's a mini division problem. So I would put 0 0.51 on the top. That's the numerator, and 0 0.03 is the denominator on the bottom. Okay, um, when we have a fraction, you could say Tebo, the top number goes inside, bottom number goes outside. So the top number is 0.51, and the bottom number goes on the outside. Top in, bottom out. Boy, this is really weird writing like this. Okay, so what do we do next? Um, a lot of my students... Uh, I don't want to change colors. It'd be too annoying to go back and forth. So there's a saying that's been around. I don't know where. How, I never heard it when I was a kid, but since I became a teacher, I heard it a lot. Move back, copycat, decimal to the top. They don't like having a decimal out here. We don't. I know how to divide by three, but I, I don't. I don't know how to divide by zero three point zero three. That's a little three hundredths. That's a little more confusing. That doesn't make sense. But the proportional relationship is still the same if whatever you do to this one, you also do to this one. So they say move back, you move the decimal back twice, then you copycat, you gotta do whatever you do to this, you have to do this. But then once you've done that, you have to move the decimal to the top so we know where it is, okay? Now the only thing I found to be a problem with the students memorizing that strategy is, they knew, if I said move back, everybody knew copycat, move decimal top. That everybody can memorize the same, you know. It's like a course. But when to use it and when to apply it, that's the part. You need to recognize that this doesn't look right and say, what? Well, that decimal outside doesn't look right. So I jokingly, my students and I always call it the baby. Who? Let, this is the division house. Who let the baby outside the house? We need to get it back in the house. So then we're like, oh, yeah, how do we get them back in the house? Move back, copycat, decimal top. So if you need that little trigger, a little extra something to remember, there you go. Okay, so after we moved it back, we really just have 51 divided by 3. Okay, 3 goes into 5 once, twice, three times a lady. That's an old song, kids. All right, so... 5 minus 3 is 2, drop the 1 down, 3 goes in 21, 7, so it's just 17, okay? So that's the only trick for dividing decimals is you have to uh, move the decimal all the way. Even if it's 5 places, you have to move it all 5. I can't keep track of where this camera is. You have to move it all 5 places um, and do the same thing to the inside, okay? All right, well, so we're going to do a few examples and some word problems as well. We're going to go to IXL, our favorite. Oh my goodness. Speaking of, this video is sponsored by IXL. 
you too can excel at math in any subject really they have everything okay so I had already starred and recommended E8 on seventh grade work for my students for today so now we're going to take a look at some problems sometimes I do some problems <clears throat> thinking 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 so I will do some problems <clears throat> so you can see a couple and as teachers we have this cool feature called jump a level so I can show you some of the harder ones too okay all right so let's go with red okay Marshall bought God, I can't even circle 50.72 pounds of peanuts and 5.03 pounds of raisins. How many pounds of snacks did he buy in all? In all. That means total. So I'm going to add. So 50.72. And then I got to line them up since I'm adding 0 0.03 and 5. Okay, line them up, drop decimal down. I have a five, I have a seven, I have a five and a five. So 55 and I think to, yes, can I do that? Okay, I can do that. So 55.75. And teacher wrong, embarrassing. Oh, what happened? I got it right. Oh, now I have to erase the problem. There's other uh, programs where once you touch a line, the whole thing disappears. You don't have to like get rid of every little thing. So I'll try to write a little smaller so I don't have as much to erase. And you can change the size of your ink pen and your eraser. So you can, and, and there's a button where you can just delete the whole screen. So Screencastify, check that out. I think you're an add-on for Google. Google is like pretty huge. So if you want to be running in their playground, you got to get with the game. All right, you got no game, son. All right, the car. No, they got a lot of game. This is an awesome feature. I just hope they improve the uh, writing tools. A carpenter bought a piece of wood that was. Oh no, I'm gonna skip a level. Oh, let's see the arrow. I'll skip two levels. Oh, gosh, there's not two levels. It's already up to 72. This There's not much more you can do on these guys. Okay, uh, let's do blue. Seafood restaurant made this many cups of clam chowder at lunch. The restaurant sold 42 cups of the chowder. How much is left? So that's going to be a subtraction problem. <clears throat> 6.26. Oh, why did I put that point there? Because you're an idiot. All right, and we know this. And the eraser no work. What? It's unerasable. All right, maybe if I get rid of that six. I don't know if it was like connected to the six. It wouldn't go without its friend. Okay, 6.62 minus, yeah, this is, <laughs> you guys, can you, just think when you get old, and there's going to be some awesome new stuff that all your kids can do, and you can't, and you feel helpless. It'll be so funny, but right now you're laughing at us old people. All right, so I'm going to subtract the 42 from all this. Okay, so now I don't have anything here. It's just zeros. So the 44 is going to drop down. Drop. Line them up, drop it down. There's a decimal. 6 minus 2 is 4. I'm going to have to borrow from this 6 to be able to subtract 4 from that 2. I have 5 left here. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down. And 12 minus 4 is 8. So switch back to my pointer. Hello. 584.44. I think this might be the. I'll do one more, guys. I'm sorry. Challenge question. To get in my class, if you get 90% or higher, which Mrs. Villarreal, former teacher at our school, implemented that. There's so much rigor and hard work in these problems, and they're all word problems. If you can get to 90, then we just go ahead and give you the 100%. Um, so to get to. I need to I think you probably would have had to answer this question I don't know all right 
last one, and then we'll move on to multiplication, and we'll be done. Multiplication and division. Claire has a set of wooden boards. Each board is 0.1 meters long. If she lays 27 boards end to end, how many meters long would the line of boards be? You know, perhaps we should say 0.1 meters short, but okay, that's the word they're going to use. All right, so measuring it, it's 0.1. This is kind of what we talked about earlier on the trick question, and they're making it a challenge question. And I hadn't done this yet, guys. I just know this is the kind of way they try to get you. In your head, you're going to be thinking, oh, that's 27. Man, one times anything is 27. But we just always got to remember to count the decimal places. Now, let's make sure what I like to do when I get an answer is make sure I read the question right. So it's 1 times 27 is 27. There's one decimal place. So it's going to be 2 and 7 tenths. So each board is 0.1 long. And she's going to put 27 of them end to end. That is correct. So that's as hard as it gets for the challenge question. I know I somehow randomly got the easy ones because I'm a teacher probably, right? You guys are going to be getting all the hard ones. 2.7 meters. Well done. Okay. All right. So we're going to switch now. And I will show you some multiplication division, and we're done. All right. Um, seventh grade. I like doing some math. So it's boring without you guys. Hey, my, my frame froze. I don't know if it did for you guys. All right, so we're going to go down to for multiplication and division. Oh, that's all we had for decimals. There was no multiplication and division? Hmm, I bet on the test there could be. They don't have it on here. They have multiply and divide decimals separate. Hmm. Very interesting. So I, I would have probably assigned um, 3 and 5 as well because that we were told that's what we could be doing. Uh, I will do one of each just so you know how to do it because I was told on the test. I don't want to start it. I was told on the test we could get some stuff like that. We just didn't give you an IXL for it. Okay, That doesn't mean I'm not going to sign it for homework grades. All right, I'll skip a couple levels to get to a more relevant problem right off the bat. Jumping to a level, jumping to a level. All right, 60, let's start there. Okay. Pretty easy one here, mate. Well, let's go with some grain. So 8 times 2 is going to be 16. Carry the 1. 8 times 9 is 72 plus the 1, 73. How about that? But we've got two decimal places. So 1, 2. The answer is going to be 7.36. There you go. I mean, like the fantastic way to go, teacher. I know a lot of you are bored out of your mind, okay? So this is just more digits. It's not really more difficult. It's just a little more time-consuming. Let's see if they're going to give us a little more challenging word problem or something. I'll erase while they think of this way to try to stump me. Ooh, oh my gosh. It's three digits. Oh, it's so tricky, but... The thing they did there is they made one of them 10. Like, that's not hardly any work at all. 10 times anything, you're just going to move the decimal one place. Okay, you're making it 10 times bigger. So I'll just go ahead and change that to 38.8. And now it's times, do you all see what I did there? 0.62. All right. Because if you go 10 times this, you're going to get the same numbers, three, oh, whoops. The first line would have been zero, zero, zero. The second line would have been, you had a zero to start. Okay. So now when you add them up, you get three, eight, eight, zero. Okay. There's two decimal places. Boom. Okay. That's what I did. Okay. So then... 2 times 8, 16, 16, 17, 2 times 3 is 6, 7, 
We. Oh. I hit eraser. Trying to embarrass me in front of my friends. Technology. Okay, so then we put a zero for the next line. We got six times eight. 48. Six times eight again is another 48, but we got to count for that four. They got carried. So 54. 52. I was thinking more about my accent than the math. Sorry, guys. Two. And six times three is 18. Plus, that's 23. All right, so I'm going to have a sixer, a five. I'm going to start writing small here. Carry the one. That's going to be a 10. And it's going to be two, four, and zero, three, or five. That's a five. Okay, how many decimals? Three. So it's going to be 24.05. Zero five six. Okay. Twenty four point zero five six. Submit. All right. So let's go back to the division and do uh, one or two of those, and we're done, guys. All right. Division decimals. Divide decimals. All right. Then we're going to have a fraction lesson after this, okay? And converting fractions to decimals. Pretty easy because it's just dividing. Fractions are dividing. Every time you see a fraction, it's a number divided by the other number. That's all it is. Okay. Clarence bought a package of three tennis balls. Better highlight that. Three tennis balls. The total weight of the tennis balls because everybody wanted to know. It was very preponderant. I don't know if that's a word. All right, how much did each tennis ball weigh? So we have to divide. So you're going to put 6.6 .6 inside the division house. That's the number you want to divide. There was three of them, so I want to know how much each ball is. It's going to be 2 and a 2, but you carry the um, decimal up. Move it to the top. 2.2. .2. Roger jolly oh good show good show let's skip ahead a little bit let's go up to the tippy top top of the morning to you all right well I don't know I always did British a lot goofing around but I'm more Irish descent so I don't know why I don't do that more all right let's see let's go on well, since we said Irish then <clears throat> Pasta factory made 15.31 pounds in 44 minutes. To the nearest tenth, so we might be rounding possibly, how much pasta on average did they make each minute per minute? So you take the pounds because they're, they're wanting to know pounds per minute. So minutes what you're dividing by. So top in, bottom out. Pounds is going to go on the inside. 15.31 and on the outside is going to be the 44. I'm doing it British again. Alright, so 44 obviously doesn't fit into 15, so we got to see how many times it's going to go into 153. I know times 2, that's easy, 88. But if I put another 44 on there, so times 3, will that fit? Let's find out, shall we? So that will be a 12. This would be 12, and 1 is 13, so that's what's going to be, 132. So I'll put my 1, 3, and it's not going to probably come out even because they told us to round it to the nearest tenth or whatever. So that was 3 times. 2 times 44 is 88, and I added another one, so it's 3 times. I'll put a 3 right here. Now there is a decimal there, so it's going to be 0.3 something. All right, I'm going to need a little more room to... I need to do at least one more space so I can round it to this tenth spot. So 3 minus 2 is 1, 5 minus 3 is 2, and then I'm going to drop the 1 down, and you can see I'm going to need to keep going, okay? If I put another 88 with that, it's going to be a 0, 4, a 2, it's going to be too big. So I'm just going to be able to put another 44. That's going to be it. 
So that's going to be four times. Okay. Let's take a look here. That's four times four is 16. Carry the one, 16, 17. It looks like there's a lot of room left, but it's going to be less than 144. And you got to borrow. It's going to be 11 minus five, 6 is 5. So this had a 1, cross it out to blend to the 1. And we got a 10 left. Minus 7 is a 3. And we borrowed from this 2, so there's a 1 minus 1 is 0. So 35 left. So if I round it, it's just going to go to point 0.3. The four, and usually on these rounding problems, I would just immediately go five times it and see if it works. If it does, or it's and it needs more than five, I don't need to do anything else. If it's five or more, it's going to round up. If it's if five doesn't work, then I know it's just going to stay at what it's at. Okay, so that's that, guys. Last thing I'm going to show you: stallions. Hey guys, I miss y'all so much. Um, miss my. Oh, this is a waste. Sorry, you gotta sit here and wait so long to watch somebody just write. Stallions, I miss you guys. I hope you're all good. Um, be safe. God bless and protect you and your families. Sincere best wishes. And I will continue to try to post stuff and the test on Friday is supposed to be just 10 problems, easy problems to get off to a good start and an easy start to our first work week of distance learning. Um, Y'all be safe. Um, Google message me or remind message me any questions. All right. Take care. Have a good one, guys. Do your IXLs.